Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I am Danny Gregory, and I am your drawing companion for today and for, for every week at this time, uh, except for last week, and I will apologize for that, but I was sick. As you can hear, <clears throat> you'll still hear I'm a little uh, congested. Um, and in the background, you might occasionally hear my wife coughing with the same malady. Yes, my son came to visit us from Los Angeles a couple weeks ago, which was fantastic. And he brought us a belated Christmas present, which was a chest and head cold. And uh, he graciously presented it to me. And then he went back to Los Angeles and I enjoyed the cold for a week. And then I, when I was done with it, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna pass it on to Jenny and she is enjoying it now too. So hopefully that's the end of it. Hopefully we will pack it away and not worry about it. Oh, no sound. Is that the problem? Can you, are you guys hearing me? Hmm. Is there a problem with sound? I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Uh, if anybody's having a problem with sound, tell me, because uh, I will try and fix it. Excellent. Thank you, Thistle. Okay, good. I was worried it was me. That's fine. Thank you. All right. So anyway, as I was saying, um, so last week, unfortunately, I missed our get-together, but this week, um, we are, uh, we are going to take up where we left off. Good. Thank you. So the assignment that I mentioned last week comes from our list of drawing prompts. As you can see down here, there is a, a URL that, that uh, contains our list of free drawing prompts. Let me just show you quickly what that looks like. It is uh, 101 things to draw. And so generally what we do here on Draw With Me is we um, pick one of the things and we just draw it. This is not uh, intended to be a drawing lesson necessarily. It is just an opportunity to draw, to chat, to uh, to relax, and to have a nice time, um, and generally to to kind of continue with this habit of drawing. The habit of drawing is a lifelong thing. Um, I started it about twenty something years ago, maybe longer, and uh, it's just fun to do. So um, I'm glad that uh, that. Um, that you are joining me in doing it because I think that drawing together is such a nice kind of relaxing thing to do. Um, and uh, it also kind of gives you that prod that you need to like pick it up and do it. So um, get out your phone because this week's prompt was to draw the, is to draw the last photo that you took on your phone. So whatever random picture that was, pull it up on your phone and let's start drawing it. Let's draw it with whatever materials you'd like. Um, I'm going to um, switch over here to this angle. And you can see I have a drawing that I took, I think it was this morning, uh, around a little after breakfast time. And it is a view out, out the window looking down onto the intersection um, by my house. It's a thing. It's a scene that I've drawn once or twice before, not from this particular angle, but I liked it because um, it, it's an interesting juxtaposition of these these graphic shapes, and then also the trees, the denuded winter trees, and then the spots of color from the cars. It's generally a pretty monochromatic scene. Um, yeah, so I'm going to draw with a micron. I'm feeling in a sort of small drawing mode today. Like I'm feeling like I want to draw small. In fact, you know what I might do? Is I might try and draw kind of exactly the size of how this uh, photo looks on my phone. Kind of a one-to-one. -one. You know, it's interesting. I'm not going to completely... I'm not 100% confident on this rectangle, so I will... Uh, wait to finish off that side of it. So have you guys picked out your pictures? And uh, 
got your your gear ready to start in which case let's start doing it you know um drawing from photos is pretty different from drawing from life it's something that i do well in the winter i do it more because it's hard to go outside and so it's more tempting to draw from pictures um I have lots of different kinds of pictures that I draw from. I draw from pictures I've taken myself. Occasionally I'll draw from magazines or, uh, you know, photo books or occasionally from Google. Although, boy, that, that, the problem with, with drawing directly from the computer like that is it really, you're just so far away from the kind of original thing that you're drawing, right? I mean, you're drawing a photo on a computer. You're drawing a monitor. You're drawing a piece. You're drawing just drawing glass, which is sort of what I'm doing now, but um, at least I have an association with this image because I, I took it myself, and it's of a place that means something to me. So I feel better about that than if I was just drawing some random picture. So... What are you drawing, and, and what does it mean to you? You know, I wouldn't mind knowing that. What are you going to draw? Put, tell me here. Um, we have different things. A lot of... Uh... All right, S. Arts What says, I'm so lucky the last photo I took was over my pants. They were sitting on the counter, and I thought they looked so pretty. Well, that's, that's certainly nice. Presumably of your pants, not over your pants. First, I thought, like, huh, what does that mean exactly? But yeah, nice pants, okay. Um, what else? What if it's my own artwork? Well, that, that's fine, a little redundant, but uh, try it out. See, see if drawing from a photo of your own artwork is different. So let's, let's see how you progress on that. Drawing your own artwork, why not? Um, this is the corner of my street in Greenwich Village here in New York. And uh, this big red building is the NYU Library, designed by Philip Johnson, famous architect. It is kind of a slab of a building. This, it is basically a big red box. And uh, that box is made of stone stone that all comes from a particular quarry that uh, NYU or Philip Johnson wanted this particular color and uh, so he specified this 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 stone and it came from this quarry that I think is somewhere in New England and they needed so much of the stone that NYU ended up buying the quarry outright. They own it. And so as a result, they now had huge amounts of this red stone, and they ended up building several other buildings out of the same red stone, too. It's quite nice. It's a quite nice color. It's not really brownstone that you see of, see in New York. It's, uh, it is pinkish red, um, and it is... Can you hear my wife in the background? Poor thing, she's really... I mean, I feel sorry for her, but I, I'm not that worried because honestly, I was in the exact same position a week ago, coughing and hacking up stuff, it was gross. Anyway, um, this red stone. What they, what they did apparently when they first built this building is they built a big block of this red stone and they just left it here in the middle of the village to see what would happen to it and to see how it would change over time and uh, how it would deal with the climate conditions and the air you know pollution and so forth and it ended up I guess passing the test because they bought the quarry
draw this van now. Feel free to ignore me. <laughs> a lot of people do. Feel free to ignore me and just focus on your drawing if you want. Um, but I will tell you what I'm doing while I'm while I'm uh, drawing, just to prattle on, fill the void, and uh, draw this van. New York City traffic has changed a lot over the years, and fewer and fewer people have the nerve to own cars anymore in the city. It's just such a difficult thing to do to, to own a car in New York because there's really nowhere to park. Um, and if you rent a parking garage, which I did at one point in my uh, misguided youth, and um, it's just insanely expensive. I mean, you can pay for a parking spot in Greenwich Village more than a lot of people pay for rent in other parts of the world, for rent for a house. Um, so Mitzi says her picture is of uh, a visit to the museum yesterday. A mosaic of a fish. How many tiles can I draw in an hour? Interesting question. You know, Mitzi, here's a suggestion. Just draw a few of them. Draw as, draw, draw as few mosaic tiles as you need to indicate the general shape of the fish. The fact that it is a fish. Make that your challenge. Or just keep drawing. Keep drawing the rest of the afternoon. Why not? Um... I'm in kind of need to draw today, you know? I don't know about you, but it is a Thursday, so it's kind of late in the week, and um, kind of need a diversion. I had a few things on my mind, and it's nice to just kind of zone out, and particularly when you're drawing from a photo, because drawing from a photo is really, in some ways, like drawing, like doing a crossword puzzle or something, because you can just kind of work your way around the edges of the photo and just draw one thing and then draw the thing next to it and the thing next to it after that and so forth. So you end up with, you know, the whole picture bit by bit, but it, it makes for a more kind of relaxing drawing, I guess. Even if it is a little less observational, perhaps, than drawing from real life would be. Less stressful, I think. I think that's why people like to do it, too because you don't have the stress of like things moving and it's easier to measure the relationships between things when they're kind of frozen in time like that. All right, I've sort of figured out where the end of this edge of this frame is now so I can indicate that. Um, what does Corrine have to say here? Oh, um, my last photo was of the mess I saw when I opened a package with a five ounce tube of Quinn red acrylic paint. Yipes, I can imagine. That could make for an interesting drawing though. Um, Sarah, her last picture is of a video of the stormy shore here on the West Coast. That could be an interesting thing to draw, even if it's in motion. I wonder if you can set it on a loop and keep drawing it, drawing it as it unfurls. Um, Yeah, so drawing from a photo is pretty, pretty calming, you know, and um, I think this kind of thing, it's, it's a relatively complicated scene, but it is, uh, it's pretty geometric and therefore relatively easy to figure out where the bits go relative to each other.
I'm on the eighth floor of my building, so this is kind of a bird's eye view, I would say, of the street. I haven't drawn with uh, Pigma Microns for for a, for a while, I would say, for maybe even a year or two, and there's nothing like a brand new one. You know, when they get old, they can get a little uh, less responsive, but a brand new Micron is, is a real joy to work with. The lines are sharp, the nib holds its shape, it's, um, and these, pe these pens are waterproof so you can watercolor over them maybe we'll do that in a bit watercolor over this and uh, finish the image that way that might also be a way of dealing with these tree limbs because the trees are problematic I gotta be honest they're so fine there's so many of them that I don't quite know what to do. If I start just drawing them, I'm kind of worried that they will look like a, just a mess. Um, but they're kind of the reason that I took this photograph, so I don't want to just completely eliminate it. Um, drawing up the bike rack. We have this giant, it's called city bike, bike rack right outside of our house, which is... Um, means that nobody can ever park outside of our building. Yet another reason not to own a car in New York because you can't even pull up outside of your own house to drop off a package or something. You know, one of the many prices that I pay for living in Gotham. Many advantages, many strange things that we deal with as New Yorkers that other people don't have the same problem with. Um, One J Diamond, my last photo is of my poodle lying under a blanket with just her head sticking out. Well, that should be a cute drawing then. Pretty nice. Joanne is drawing a very elaborate church. Ah, I see. So you drew it and then photographed it, and now you're drawing from the photograph. It's, I'd like to hear about the difference. Raynell took a photo of her jeans at the store that were too expensive. Isn't it weird now that we have phones with us all the time, the photographs that we take? I mean, in the old days, we would never have like taken out a camera to take a picture of a pair of expensive jeans. It never have occurred to us. But now, it seems like a reasonably useful thing to do. I mean, I'm always taking photographs of like receipts and things I'm measuring and, you know, weird, weird um, non-photographic subject matter. A long time ago, I did some work with Kodak, and they told me a really interesting statistic about photo taking in the days when people had cameras that used 35 millimeter film or instamatic, instamatic film, um, you remember instamatic cameras, um, and those those, like, I was curious how much film did people use? How many, how much did, uh, how many pictures did people take? What would be your guess? Let's say this is 15, 20 years ago. So before the advent of the smart camera, how many photos would you say the average American family took in one year. I'll tell you what I know in a minute, but in the meantime, tell me what you think. I won't even give you a hint. How many rolls of film, so presumably 36 or 24 um, pictures, how many did they take in a year? What do you think? See if anybody's come up with an answer. 36. So 36 rolls, you mean? Is that what you mean? 36 rolls of film in a year. Um, anybody else? 36 rolls. 
What did you mean 36 pictures? 36 rolls would be 360, be about 1,000 pictures, I guess. So that's, a, that's one vote for 1,000 pictures, unless I got it wrong. Uh, 304 rolls, 100 rolls, 350. Okay, so these are pictures, I'm assuming. 75 photos in a year, um, one roll. Chris says one roll. Uh, Anthony says over 900. S. Bliss says 36 photos in total. Karen says three rolls. Yeah. Uh, 75, 10 rolls, 50 rolls. Oh, wait, uh, okay. Sabrina says she used 50 rolls a weekend. All right, well, that's clearly abnormal. Um, so, yeah, 36 pictures. Interesting. So, um, the People Codec told me that, yes, the average American family took one roll of film a year. So, probably 36. I mean, unless it was 12. Those Instamatic cameras sometimes were 12. This is what they said, that people take buy, would buy a roll of film before their summer vacation. They would take pictures then, and they would finish it at Christmas. So those are the two times that they would take pictures, and they would have it processed at the beginning of the year, and that's when they would have their pictures for the whole year. Think about that. In comparison to how we deal with photography today, right? One roll of film, 36 pictures. So that's why when you look back on, on uh, old photo albums, like what are the pictures of? They're definitely Christmas and vacations, and occasionally like people screwing around in the backyard on the weekend, or like somebody came over to visit and you have pictures of them like sitting on the couch smoking a cigarette and drinking a highball or something. But uh, yeah, that was it. So, so not a lot. Too much math. Tell me about it. I'm the one with a clogged head. So yeah, one roll. So what do you, I wonder what it is now. I wonder how many pictures the average person takes now. Significantly different. Think about how many, and not only that, that's for a family. That's a family's pictures. So um, now each one of us is walking around all the time carrying a camera. Famous photographer once said, the best camera to use, somebody asked him like, what's the best camera? Like, what should I get? And he said, the best camera is the one you have with you. You know, which I think is really smart. And you know what I would say about the best sketchbook? Same thing. Have a sketchbook that you can carry with you. Duh. Don't get a giant one that you have to leave on your desk. Best watercolor set? This is actually a really good watercolor set. It's Windsor Newton field kit. But the best watercolor set, again, small enough to carry with you unless you're planning to do watercolors in the studio, but yeah. If you don't have it, you don't use it. So that makes sense. Painting this road blue, I don't want you to be confused and think that it is. There's a lot of miraculous things in New York, but blue roads are not one of them. Blue highways, not either. We don't really have highways here. Um, not in Manhattan, really, except for the FDR Drive and the, whatever the West Side Drive is called now. But yeah, uh, I'm painting it blue just because it feels right to me with that orange in the corner. So it's about the size of it. I like painting with watercolors um, on top of line drawings. I find that it's, watercolor is a great medium this way. It doesn't obscure your drawing. Um, and ideally it doesn't really affect your drawing much. It's particularly if you've done it with a nice waterproof pen like this Pigma Micron. How's your picture coming along? 
Is it a challenge? Are you learning something about that photograph? That's that's to me a key thing. Is like, what do you learn about the picture that you're taking, that you're drawing from, as you draw from it? Because you know, we take as we as we just discussed, we take so many photographs, but yet when you take a photograph, it is just a fleeting moment, and it's something that you don't really you don't pay attention to it even. Even if you spend a certain amount of time lining up the shot, compared with the observations that we have when we're doing a drawing, it's just no comparison, really, right? Um, to what you learn about what you're seeing when you slow down and study each element of it by drawing it. Okay. I'm now getting to a point where I'm about to make a decision that I may come to regret. And that decision has to do with these trees that are over here, you see. Eliza, one of the things I always learn when I draw my cats is how hard it is to draw black cats. Unlucky too, perhaps, maybe not. Is it difficult because they're just a solid black mass and you can't differentiate? You know, uh, you draw the outline and then you have to fill the whole thing in. And there's just a couple of eyeballs sticking out. Is it that they don't have very shiny fur with reflections in it? Or is it just that cats are like horses? Horses are really kind of difficult for people to draw. And uh, I wonder if cats are like that. I, I, I've drawn a certain number of cats. I'm a, much more of a dog drawing person. But um, I imagine cats are kind of stretchy and so it might be more more difficult to nail down their proportions is that part of what the issue is Eliza says that in the UK black cats are lucky hmm I guess in the UK these days you could use all the luck you can get certainly true here in the United States where we are going through difficult times challenging times as well but uh, maybe we just need more cats. Let's all go out there and get some cats in on the, on the story, on the program. Um, Nina says, this is the first time I've done this and I'm pleased with my result. It actually looks like my photo. Fantastic, congratulations. Um, I'm interested to know what that means. Does it mean that you got all the bits in the right place? Or does it mean that your drawing actually looks almost photographic, which would be quite an accomplishment in this short amount of time? Like, have you got all the reflections in there? Or did you just get the, um, the parts where they're supposed to be, which is an accomplishment too, you know? I think it's also when you, depends on what you're working from. It seems like most of us are working on if I was to put it into a category, we're either working on landscapes, like I am, or working on still lives of objects. And so far, I haven't heard anybody saying that they are drawing a, f a portrait. Might be a different story. Raynell is happy that she didn't buy the jeans. You see? Those jeans that you didn't buy are already proving to be extremely valuable to you, right? There's a whole art lesson in them. I... A few years ago, my, when when Patty was alive, I bought her. It was Christmas time, and you know, if you've been married for a while, I'm sure you've had this experience where it just is a challenge to buy Christmas and birthday presents every year. You're just like, oh, now what? What do I come up with this time? And I would think of things that I would like to buy her, um, but I wasn't really sure whether I could pull the trigger on any one of them and buy them yet. So I didn't buy them. Instead, what I did uh, is I. This particular year, I did drawings of all the things that I was going to buy here. And I made a book, uh, an accordion book, a watercolor book, and I drew each of the objects or experiences that I was going to give her. And I made this little book. And then um, my friend Roz, who's a really good bookbinder, she bound that little book together, the drawings together into a book. And she made, another friend of mine made a necklace so that she could hang this little book. It was small, it was like that size. She could hang it on her necklace. 
And uh, you could also take the necklace, the book off the necklace if you didn't feel like walking around with a book around your neck. Um, and that was my main Christmas present to her, was like, here are all the things I thought about buying you, but didn't. Is that a lousy birthday or Christmas present? I don't know. That's what I did. I gave her a couple of other actual presents. And I said to her, look, if there's anything in this book that you really like, I will be glad to buy it for you. But I couldn't make up my mind, so I made you this instead. It was actually nice. It was nice. I think it was less clutter in our house, too. So that was my thing. Um, having trouble keeping things in proportion. Well, here's one thing you can... One of the great things about drawing from a photograph, one of the things that makes it easy, is you can measure. You know, So if you look down here, you'll see I'm measuring like the height of this building. And then I can say, okay, I'm going to keep that my fingers the same distance, and I'm going to measure three, four. So that height of that building, that piece of building there, is one quarter. Let me see if I got that right. Two, three, four. I did. Um, and then you can say to yourself, okay, um, let me measure another thing in the photograph, the length of this building, and that diagonal. So then I can do that here. I can do it here. I got it kind of wrong. This is actually shorter. It's right because I actually made the edge of my picture in the wrong place. But so with a photograph, it's much easier. You know, you can do it in real life as well. You know, you can uh, hold your fingers up like that, and you can measure things, and then you can turn, or you can hold up your pen, and you can measure something, and then you can turn it. And you can measure relationships that way more easily. So photos can actually make it easier to uh, do things in perspective. Um, Good. Sarah is drawing a light installation, one of 28 we saw last week, and that's interesting. What does a light installation mean? I went to, uh, when I was in this New, New Year's, Christmas time, New Year's, I was in Phoenix visiting my in-laws, and we went to the botanical gardens there, and they had this light installation there. We went at night. It was actually New Year's Eve, so it was dark. And they have these animals, plastic animals, like life-size animals. In fact, seeing as you're here, let me show you some of them. Here, look at that. Life. So th this thing was like eight feet tall. See this? This rabbit. Um, and they were different. These wolves. So this is a light installation. And those are garbage bags. <laughs> it's an example of the kinds of thing I was talking about. Yeah, look at how beautiful they are. So. Yeah, that was uh, that was a light, the light installation I went to. It was pretty cool. Maybe that's what you this kind of thing you saw. It was a, a, a collective of Italian artists made it. Lesser DXTZ is using kid style materials, pencils and crayons. That's fun. Drawing a kid made object. I love that. So you're drawing a a piece of art made by a child using crayons and, and pencils. That's really fun. I like a lot drawing with those kinds of materials, too. They, they make it... Um, there's several benefits, I think, to doing that kind of drawing or using those kinds of materials. Is they, It makes it uh, lower pressure somehow. Like, like, you know, they're just crayons. But also, I think they are like a little bit of a time machine that takes you back to the freedom that you had when you were a kid. And then, of course, you're drawing a kid's piece of art, so that adds to it as well. That's really nice. Marie's also drawing a cat, a neighborhood cat that she knows, very fat and very friendly. I like that. Hopefully it has a nice face. Um, who, what, who else is drawing interesting things? Let me just look here. Nina forgot to bring her watercolors. Always bring them with you, you know. Have a holster. Have one of these water pens. Water brushes, I mean. Hopefully you know what that is. Water brush. A handle is full of water, so you just squeeze it. And you don't need to have big buckets of water to watercolor anywhere. Good. All right, I'm pretty pleased with this tiny drawing of mine. Show it to you more closely. Compared to my photo of same. 
yeah, it was nice. I like it. I, I enjoyed the experience. And guess what? I completely punked out on doing the uh, trees. Didn't even do them, just ignored them. It's as if somebody had come along with a massive chainsaw and cleared the street of trees, which would be, frankly, a terrible thing because I love trees and I love the trees on my street, but could happen. <laughs> Certainly could happen in my sketchbook and did. Okay. So that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you did... Uh, did enjoy the experience soon that you did some drawings that you liked. I mean, this is a cool thing to say to yourself. Let me just, I mean, particularly when you add that random element of um, the last picture you took, you know, so don't go through and say, should I do this picture? Should I do that picture? Just boom, the last picture you took. And that's kind of what I like about these drawing prompts too, is, is you don't have to put much thought into it. You just start drawing and you just say, okay, what am I going to draw? Here's the thing. Let's plunge into it and see what happens. That to me is the most fun kind of drawing. We, you're not, you're, you're just doing it for the sake of it. You know, it's kind of like throwing a, a dart at the map of the world and instantly going there, except this involves less luggage. Nicer. So next week we are going to get together again. Hopefully by then you will have downloaded, you will have gone to and I will bring this up again. You will have gone to freedrawingprompts.com and uh, gotten your free list of drawing prompts. This thing is designed, by the way, let me show it to you again. This thing is designed to uh, kind of be the size of your phone if you want it to be, so you could take a picture of it, or the size of, uh, you know, a sketchbook page, or you could print it out big and you could have it hanging on the wall. Um, I think we're also going to probably give like a text version of it if you want, if you don't want the fiddliness. But, you know, a fun thing to do is just to pick two numbers, S you know, uh, seven and zero. That's going to be what we're going to draw next week. Seven and zero. S number 70, draw a map from your childhood. A map. Have you drawn a map before? Maps are really fun to draw. And this doesn't have to be like a Google map. It doesn't have to be a map that you would use to, uh, to drive through your neighborhood, although it could be if you want to. But it also could be just um, a memory map, you know. And memory maps are interesting because they're about like, what are the relationships between spaces that you remember, you know? As a child, you might, you might uh, think that the store was like a million miles away or you might want to draw a map of your of your uh, bedroom or of your what you remember about your school do you remember much about that um i remember a lot of maps from when i was a kid one of my favorite maps maybe you remember this one too the front pages what, what were called the end pages of winnie the pooh and it had a whole map um, of Hundred Acre Woods, where Pooh lived. And also Wind in the Willows, which was always my favorite book, also, I seem to remember, had a map of where the story took place. I always loved books that did that. You know, that, so you could kind of trace along with you. So maybe that's a map from your childhood, and you, maybe you want to try and remember what that was like. You know, what was that like? They should have done that for Harry Potter. I don't know, did they ever do that? It would have been nice to have had a map of Hogwarts, you know? Um, so anyway, so that is what we will be drawing next week. We will be meeting again, noon, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I will be con voce. I will be fully uh, healed in my throat, chest, lungs, and nasal passages. And I will have my, my um, typical mellifluous tones will hopefully have returned. I will be able to serenade you with some more advice and commentary as we draw a map of our childhoods. Meet me here. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay? Narnia. Good point, Eliza. Narnia. Was there a map of Narnia? Hard to say. Maybe there was. Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Might have had. What's hashtag for Instagram? Good question. Thank you for the question. Hashtag 
draw with me one word draw with me or d draw double w if me draw with me the hobbit did it yes yes it did of course it did tolkien drew the drew the map you're absolutely right Jen says there is a map in Harry Potter. He's walking around with it. But is there an actual drawn map, though? Do they actually show you the map in the book? Hmm. Not so sure. Not so sure. Lord of the Rings, yes, like The Hobbit. Yes, that's true. So anyway, um, as Jen says, I love those maps. I spent so much time looking at those. True. Did you make maps? I used to love to make maps. I used to make up fictional islands. You draw a shape. And then you keep drawing the shape around it, and it becomes like a topographical map. And then you can draw um, little islands coming off it, and you can draw the ocean, and you can draw the creatures in it, and you can name places, Treasure Island style. Oh, man. We're going to have really fun. I can't wait till next Thursday. I hope you're excited about it, too. <laughs> have a great week. Do some other drawings. Draw from some other photos. Take some other photos. Buy some watercolors. And meet me here with your memory and your sketchbook, Thursday, noon, YouTube.